It was a bright and sunny Friday morning in Mizutafu, Japan. The air was positively alive, the May heat gently warming the earth. And across said earth, civilians everywhere brimming with excitement over what was to come, the much-anticipated UA Sports Festival. Today's the day, after all the training I did, it's finally here, Izuku slowly chewed on his rice, unable to muster up much of an appetite. Izuku, sweetie. Inko placed a reassuring hand on his shoulder, you've barely touched your food. You need your strength, you know. He smiled appreciatively at his mom, yeah, I know. I'm just thinking, is all. She nodded knowingly, you know, it's okay to be nervous. I mean, it's the UA Sports Festival. You're amazing just for participating. Izuku laughed, I know. I know. But I'm not really nervous per se. I mean, it's kinda scary to be on stage in front of the whole world, but I've also been working for this for so long. It's weird, but it's like I'm somewhere between nervous and excited, you know what I mean? Nope. Inko deadpanned, but chuckled soon after, but I know you're gonna do your best. Now hurry up and finish so we can go. You too, young lady. Yes, ma'am. Eri said obediently as she devoured her daily morning apple with gusto, earning coups from the other two family members. I should really thank All Might again for giving them tickets, Izuku thought as he finally finished his breakfast and changed into his gym uniform. The train station was absolutely packed with people heading to the UA stadiums, so it was only natural that the Midoriyas were assaulted with a steady stream of, hey, good luck, and do your best, and we're rooting for ya, among other pieces of encouragement once they saw Izuku's gym uniform. On the train itself, a few kids gathered around the middle Midoriya to hear exciting stories about UA and what his quirk was, much to the latter's embarrassment. Inko, on the other hand, was already about to bawl at the attention her son was receiving, even though Eri pouted slightly at having Deku and I's attention diverted. But it wasn't long until they arrived at the UA gates and the family had to separate. Alright, we're supposed to head straight to our seats in the first year stadium. Izuku nodded. I think I need to go to the waiting area for students so that we can make our entrance. Inko smiled and cupped her son's cheek, hey, do your best. We're gonna be cheering for you. Eri nodded and, after a moment's hesitation, hugged Izuku's leg, good luck, Deku and I. I. Izuku looked at his family and grinned confidently, thanks. I'll see you afterwards. Once they left for the stadium entrance, Izuku made for the student entrance, only for a strong hand to cup his shoulder, yo, young Midoriya. A all me dash, another hand clamped over his mouth. All might hissed, ssh. I'm skinny right now. He removed his hand from Izuka's face, cautiously watching the moving crowd around them. S sorry. What are you doing here? All might grinned, probably scaring a few kids with his skeletal visage, I came to see how you were doing. He gestured for Izuku to follow and led him down the student path. Oh oh, I'm good, thanks. And my mom and Eri really liked the tickets. Thanks again. He laughed, it's nothing. Recovery girl insisted anyways. She thought it'd be good for young Eri. Is she doing better? Izuka nodded, smiling, yeah, she's doing really well. She and my mom are getting really close, too. Ha ha. I'm glad to hear that. All might look straight at his protege, but how are you doing? Huh. Izuku was taken aback. You feel ready for the sports festival? Nervous? Excited? We haven't really had much time to catch up the last few weeks. Besides two days ago when you traumatized half the class, Izuku sheepishly chuckled at the memory. I'm feeling good, actually. I got the Sharingan's time limit to around 10 minutes of straight use. All Might flashed a huge smile, hey, that's great news. That'd probably help with some of the preliminary events. But what about one for all? Did you increase your limit at all? Izuku nodded, yeah I can manage about 5% now. But I actually figured out a couple really cool things to do with one for all. See, I let it dash. All Might held up a polite hand, hey, I think it'd be better if you surprised me with this. Besides, we're already at your stop. True to word, the duo was right by the class 1A waiting room. Oh. Izuku looked down and sighed, I haven't forgotten, you know. What you asked me to do. This kid, All Might placed a hand on Izuku's head and softly rustled his hair, good man. I'll be cheering for you. He removed his hand and went to the elevator to the teacher's viewing box. 
Izuku touched his hair where All Might had ruffled it and smiled, a warm tint on his cheeks. Oh, Deku. Yurarika called from one of the tables. Yayorozu and Kurishima waved to him from across the table. Deku grinned back, hey. You feel ready? Yurarika laughed nervously, I thought I was but man, do I feel nervous now? Ribbit. You're probably not ready then. Hey Ajui. Yayorozu chastised, be more considerate. You're one to talk. Ribbit. Izuku laughed sheepishly at the two dejected females' comically downtrodden expressions. They're all clearly nervous, but they're definitely gonna give it their all, I have some really awesome friends, don't I? Midoriya. A serious and rather monotonous voice interrupted his thoughts. He turned around, Todoroki. What's up? The taller boy looked dead into Izuku's eyes with unusual intensity, it's safe to say that I'm stronger than you. Huh, I mean, yeah. What's going on? I don't know why, but All Might's got his eye on you, doesn't he? Izuku's face went stark white, w what? Does he know about one for all? No. He just suspects something, but... What? Todoroki sighed, I'm not gonna make you answer. But I'm going to beat you. The entire class was focused now. Kaminari joked, man, you're really in it for Midoriya's blood. Todoroki coldly retorted, I'm not here to pretend to make friends. Hey, that's uncalled for, Todoroki. There's being competitive and then there's being flat out hostile. Yayorozu said sternly. The dual quirk user was silent for a moment before sighing and turning away. I, I should say something. Unfortunately for the greenette, the door opened wide to reveal the always energetic class rep, everyone, we're going out first. Let's go, did I miss something? He said, noting the tense atmosphere. No. Todoroki bumped past him on his way out. Ignoring that, everyone lined up by class number and waited by the stadium entrance. Midoriya. Yayorozu whispered from behind Mineta, you okay? I don't know what's up with Todoroki. Izuka nodded with a slight smile, yeah, I'm fine. I actually wanted to talk to him but I guess that'll have to wait. Without further ado, let's kick off the first year stage. Present mixed voice cut through the air on the stadium loudspeakers, they're the ones T.O. watched this year. Fresh off a villain attack and tougher than ever, it's the Hero Courses Class A. Everyone took a collective breath and stepped into the sunlight, allowing themselves to get swept up in the crowd's cheers. Yurarika gasped, wow, there's so many people. I don't like this. Izuku squeaked, all his prior confidence gone. I wonder where mom and Eri are. I could probably find them with the Sharingan but there's so many people, I might just burn it out. Mina commented, wow, they're really hyping us up. Don't know how that's gonna sit with the other classes. Kirishima deadpanned as he remembered the disaster that was the student council meeting. Present Mike continued to call the other seven classes and had all the students assemble around the stage where a interesting figure stood. Please give it up for your referee for the first year stage, the R-rated hero, Midnight. The titular heroine smirked and brandished her whip with a profound swing of her hips, representing the first year students is class 1A Zizuku Midoriya. Huh? Who? Midoriya, go. Yayorozu hissed, pushing him towards the stage. BBBBB but, what? He timidly walked up the steps and approached the mic. Kurishima scratched his head, I guess it's cause Midoriya got first on the entrance exam. On the hero course exam. One of the gen ed students retorted dryly with a glare. Izuku gulped. Nobody told me I had to speak. There's so many people. Um, H hello. He muttered into the mic, unwittingly causing a static whine to reverberate throughout the arena. Grasping his ears, Aizawa remarked from the announcer's box, you know, I don't think I told Midoriya that he was gonna give a speech. Present Mick's eyes bulged, seriously. Aizawa nodded, causing the blonde to fall into hysterics, man, Shoda. You're a terrible person. W-L, I-I. This is bad. People are already getting bored. I need to make a good impression and fast, what do I say? Shinso smirked, looks like he wasn't much after all. Man, this is the best student in class A? Guess that really says a lot, huh? Minoma snickered. Blushing from those comments among other overheard whispers, Izuku took a deep breath. Just say what you're thinking and get this over with. 
say what you wanted to tell Shinso and Minoma, and Todoroki. You um, I know I probably don't deserve to be up here. The audience collectively fell silent and leaned forward. Most everyone here is probably stronger than me. I'm only even up here because I got lucky in the entrance exam. Yayorozu cocked her head, he's being really self-deprecating, huh? Ida put a hand to his chin, he must be playing humble, right? But everyone here is trying to do their best, aiming for the top spot. So, I guess what I wanna say is, I'm not gonna fall behind. I'm gonna shoot for the win with everything I've got. Izuku bowed and descended from the stage to fairly loud applause, and one insanely loud sob. On the steps, he locked eyes with Todoroki. For a second, they just stared at each other before nodding and breaking eye contact. I'd say that means he got the gist of it. Deku. That speech was awesome. Yuraraka applauded. Izuku blushed and rubbed his head, why you think so? I'm glad you liked it. Indeed, that was quite galvanizing. Is Ida even trying to sound like a normal teen anymore? Midnight cleared her throat, now that we're all positively aroused by the student rep, let's get right into the first event. She waved her whip towards a wall, which rapidly deconstructed, revealing a hidden gate. The screen behind her flashed yellow and the first event appeared, the obstacle course. You'll all run 4 kilometers around the stadium perimeter. But watch out for the traps and dangers we set out for you. Now get in position. The students all stood just outside the course entrance and readied themselves to take off. Remember, as long as you stay on the track, anything goes. When the green light goes on, start. Todoroki cracked his neck and extended his right arm, small waves of mist already forming. I'll finish this in one hit. The red light flashed. Bakugu formed a fist and growled at the hybrid quirk user. That bastard, he challenged the wrong person. The yellow light turned on. Izuku stretched out and took a deep breath. Okay. This is perfect for my training. The second the light changes, I'll do. It. The light turned green accompanied by a sonorous horn. Instantly, everything went to shit. Gah. Izuku groaned as he was forced between the rushing crowd in the hallway out of the stadium. Can't even focus. It's so narrow, it's basically a bottleneck. However, the ground suddenly became encased with ice, entrapping most of the students. Hey! What the hell? And Todoroki freezes half of the students in one move. Todoroki ran past the trapped students, so the hall's the first filter, too bad. You're too naive, Todoroki. Yairozu called as she created a pole to propel herself out of his attack's range. Bakugu roared as he blasted over the ice field, you think it'll be that easy, icy hot? One by one, more and more students appeared through the crowd, each escaping Todoroki's trap in their own quirky ways, A-N-H-A-H. Puns. Achim. That's more people than I thought. Todoroki remarked as he kept running at full speed. Todoroki. Mineta cried from high in the air, you think you're so hot? Not really. I actually actively try to be cold. Shut up. Take this, special move. GRA dash, Mineta was cut short on account of getting flicked to oblivion by a giant metal finger. Todoroki skid to a halt, robots? Are these the same robots from the entrance exam? There was a fairly sizable army of the small robots and around 10 of the massive zero pointers. Those who took the hero courses exam instantly stopped and contemplated running away. Everyone else instantly stopped and contemplated how much shit they gave those who took the hero courses exam. The first obstacle, Robo Inferno. In the stands, it was becoming evidently clear that the real hazard wasn't giant robots but the flood risk coming from the green-haired mother tightly gripping her white-haired daughter, how does that work, genetically? While watching the race on the big screen. No, you can't fight those. Please just run away, baby. She wailed, presumably for her child. Miss Inko, it's okay. Deku and I, I worked really hard for this. Airy placated, patting the mother's knees. She wiped her face and took a deep breath, you're right, sweetie. Sorry for getting all hysterical. The onlooker's sweat dropped. Who's the adult? From the teacher's box, All Might smiled at the sight of the Midoriyas, enjoying, the festival. But his expression hardened when he turned back to the screen. I suppose it doesn't even matter if you win this round as long as you get to the next one. But I guess it's time to see the fruits of your labors, young Midoriya. 
how does Yue even pay for this? Yayarozu deadpanned, mentally calculating how to build a mortar. Izuku gulped. This is bad. I probably can't beat the zero pointers without breaking my body. I'll just have to go around, he spread his feet apart and clenched his fists at his hips, one for all, Fu dash. A sudden cold breeze broke his attention, I almost wished there was something better. Todoroki placed his hand on the ground and swiped up at an encroaching thwomp, since my old man's watching. In an instant, many of the robots, including the Zero Pointers, were encased in a thick layer of ice. Without even marveling at the insanity off his feet, he took off past the machines. H hey, he just beat them. Let's go. Some poor sod exclaimed. I wouldn't. Todoroki called as he cleared the obstacle, I froze them while they were off balance, so they'd fall. On cue, a few of the Zero Pointers toppled over, dousing the students in dust and frost. Holy shit. He could have killed us. Wait, someone's buried there. Look. No way. Are people gonna die? From under one of the collapsed bots, someone emerged with a roar and the shattering of metal, seriously, Todoroki? I'm the only one who could have survived that. From under one of the collapsed bots, someone emerged with a roar and the shattering of metal, seriously, class A? I'm the only one who could have survived that. The redhead and silverhead looked at each other before groaning and taking off. Seriously man. I already don't stand out as it is. You kidding me? I didn't ask though get freaking Mechagodzilla dropped on my head. Kaminari chuckled, man, they're lucky that they can just break through the robots. Shut up, Pikachu. Bakugo roared as he rocketed himself up and over the zero pointers, followed closely by Siro and Tokoyami. Wow. Class A is overwhelmingly in the lead. Any thoughts, Eraserhead? Aizawa's dull voice sounded through the speakers, it's not because the other classes are bad or anything. It's because Class A's gone through a trial by fire and forgotten how to hesitate. Izuku smiled at the sentiment as he jumped at a one-pointer. These guys are faster than the Sharingan can keep up with. But with 5%. Carolina Smash. Izuku jumped forward and delivered a full-powered cross-chop that pulverized the speedy machine. Now to find an opening. On cue, a sound like a cannon reverberated through the air. Izuku turned to see, a cannon. Yayorozu turned and fired shot after shot, each time incapacitating a different zero-pointer. She smirked, easy. Her shirts open, ignoring his blush, Izuku took off, only to stop again once he realized that one of the zero-pointer's head was falling forward. Yayorozu. Working on it. She called back, struggling to move the cannon up. It's not gonna get there in time, Izuku jumped without hesitation and grinned. Good thing I came prepared. There was a brilliant flash of light, the smell of ozone, and the sound of a falcon's cry. Then, the zero-pointer head exploded, revealing one very happy Izuku and a slightly steaming, slightly red hand. It doesn't hurt too bad. And now's my opening, he focused the power that he used to keep in one place around his body instead. His entire being became outlined in red veins. Then he landed, kicking up a small cloud of dust. Then it was suddenly pushed back with a light shockwave. Izuku was glowing, literally. His skin crackled with green lightning and his red eyed were rimmed with emerald light. He smirked, one for all, full cowl. Yes. Yes. All Might cheered, jumping up and down in his seat. Ahem. Ectoplasm and Cementos cleared their throats, causing the blushing blonde to sit back down and attempt to regain his composure. Yayorozu smirked, huh? I was wondering when you'd pull those out. Izuku grinned at her, I just needed a moment to breathe. See you at the finish line. He took off at a sprint and reveled in the feeling of his new ability. A three-pointer and a two-pointer were in his way. Without a second's hesitation, he casually knocked them aside and kept moving. Soon enough, he came upon the second obstacle. If you thought the last one was easy, then try, the fall. Izuku gulped at the task, several rock pillars attached together by tightropes over a seemingly endless chasm. Huh, Deku. Izuku turned to face Yurarika, Mina, and Tsuyu, oh hey. You're all here too. Azui pointed at him, Midoriya, you're sparking. Ribbit. He looked down and laughed with realization, oh, it's just my new technique. Cool, right? I found a way to control my quirk without hurting myself. 
Whoa. So you're like a glow stick now. Mina poked Izuku and yelped when a stray arc caught her finger. Eh sorry. He turned back to the chasm. I can see Todoroki and Kaken around the halfway point. How can we catch up to them? Suyu answered, it's just a tightrope. She jumped forward and began crawling across the rope like a frog. Ha <laughs> ha. This is my chance. The three Class A students turned to see a girl with pink hair wearing goggles, special boots, and several other apparatuses, take a good look, all you support companies. Especially the big ones. I'm guessing she's in the support course. Mina protested, hey, why do you get to have all those tools? No fair. The mysterious girl chuckled mischievously, heh. For us support course students, we're allowed to use whatever gear we make ourselves to even the odds with you hero kids. She tapped a button on her belt, releasing what looked like a graping hook from the device around her torso. This is the best way for us in the support course to show off. She giggled as the hook secured itself into a pillar and pulled her towards it with great force. She then activated her boots, which propelled her up using fans. With these two tools, she essentially rocketed over the majority of the obstacle in one shot. Look at my babies. Mina groaned, talk about misplaced equality. Izuku sweat dropped. Mina, I don't think that's ever been a thing. He jumped from rope to rope, relying on the tension to keep him from slipping. I wish I could figure out something else, but it takes so much just to keep full cowl going, I can barely process the info from the Sharingan. Just stay at 5%. Stay at 5%. Stay at dash, Izuku felt his foot slip off a rope, huh? He started to tip over. No. 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 He fell down. No. 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 Damn it, then he stopped. Please be more careful in the future. A soft voice called from above. He suddenly realized that green vines were wrapped around his torso. And they were pulling him up. Once on level ground, he turned to his savior, thanks so Mu, it's you. You're Shiazaki, right? Class B's treasurer. She nodded with a smile, thorny vines retracting back to her head, nice to see you again Midoriya and you're welcome, but we really should keep going. Oh oh, right. He continued his trek across the ropes, more carefully this time, but berated himself. Damn it. Again, I'm only in the running because of dumb luck. Now I need to win, otherwise, how do I know I even deserve this? In the front lines, Todoroki just finished sliding across the last rope when he felt a wave of heat behind him. He ducked instinctively, just in time to avoid Bakuga's blast. He caught up. Must have been a slow starter. Damn it, icy hot. You declared war on the wrong person. Bakugo roared as he fired an explosion backwards, both pushing him forward and halting the former leader's momentum. The crowd was whipped into a frenzy at the sight of Todoroki, son of the number two hero, Endeavor, dominating much of the race. Man, that kid isn't just a powerful quirk. Look at his athleticism and perception. He'd give a pro a run for the money. In the background of the stands, a certain hero grinned, the flames on his beard practically dancing as he overheard the praise, that's the way. And just like that, Bakugu from class A steals the lead. But will he keep it? The same man, Endeavor, clenched his fist and his eyes hardened dangerously, Shoto. And just like that, they're at the final obstacle, the Afghan carpet. The mines aren't really harmful, but they don't tickle either. Aizawa added. Izuku shook himself free of his nerves at the sight of so many mines and focused on his goal. They're already halfway across, I almost wish I had a panel like in the entrance exam. Would've just blown myself up for a boost, Izuku smiled at his joke but went to work. With just the Sharingan, I still wouldn't have the speed or agility to avoid the mines. But with full cowl and all that training with Ishido, after intensely training with and observing the pinkette and combining his two quirks, jumping around the mines was practically effortless. I can still catch up. I can still catch up. I have to catch up. Kaken. Bakugu temporarily stopped assaulting Todoroki to look at the sound source, while the latter also turned away, Deku. His gaze hardened at the electricity shrouded team. Another power up? God damn it. I'm not gonna lose to you. Either of you. With their attention on him, Izuku remembered what he felt against the Nomu. I want them to stop. Stop. Stop, 
deactivating full cowl to focus, Izuku called, Sharingan. His eye immediately itched and he saw the red and black pattern reflected in his opponent's eyes. Todoroki and Bakugu instantly seized up, albeit only for a moment. Yes. It worked. Sorry, but I can't let anyone down. Izuku overtook them and felt a sudden lightness in his chest. And Midoriya takes the lead. Bakugu and Todoroki are so stunned they can't even move. Huh? Deku, what happened? Bakugu started to stir. Never mind. Todoroki snapped out of it as well, was that his quirk? They quickly realized they were behind and took off with less than kind intent. Damn it. It didn't work nearly as well as it did against Nomu, Izuku reactivated full cowl just in time for the three of them to exit the minefield and madly dash for the home stretch at the same time. Damn it DKU. Bakugu fired explosions to his side, trying to push back the green net in the middle, who was also busy dodging icy blows from the hybrid quirk wielder. Wait for it. The three of them entered the tunnel back to the stadium. Now, Izuku, recalling his lessons against Ojiro, slapped Todoroki's chin up and immediately pushed his collarbone, both with his right hand. Todoroki bumped into the wall and fell behind, temporarily stunned. He then waited for Bakugu's next explosion, which he not only dodged, but managed to catch the latter in a wrist lock. Using his momentum from continuously running and his enhanced strength, Izuku jumped into the trap Bakugu, knocking the wind out of him against the wall while the former simply ricocheted back into the middle of the path, just in time to exit the hall and re-enter the stadium. And the first one back is Izuku Midoriya. Cheers erupted from the audience and confetti descended on the panting team. He was remotely aware of Todoroki charging in, followed closely by Bakugu, but he was too busy wiping the tears from his eyes. I did it, I did it, he looked up at the teacher's box and grinned at his smiling mentor. Izu. He turned and saw his mother wailing so hard from the stands, she created a small geyser. In her lap, Eri was actually beaming at him. He chuckled and waved at his family. Don't cry. Don't cry. Screw it, Izuku just let the triumphant tears fall as he watched the rest of the students enter the stadium again. Bakugu looked at the weeping wimp and rubbed his right arm, the one that got caught in a grab. That's twice now, that little, that won't happen again, YA hear me, Deku. Todoroki rubbed his head. Whatever he hit me with, it completely threw me off. But all I remember is red. Deku, that was awesome. Yurarika panted once she finished, you were jumping and stuff. Man, are you sure your costume isn't a rabbit? He chuckled with a slight blush. Why is she always so close? I it wasn't much. Ida sulked, I can't believe I got sixth, in a race off all things. That's so uncool of me. Yurarika patted his back, well, it could be worse. She pointed to Yayorozu, who looked oddly tired for someone who placed first in Aizawa's fitness test. Then she turned to the side and everything made sense again. You um, do you need some help getting off, Maneta? Izuku asked tentatively. No thank you. I've gotten off plenty of times. Ha 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 ha. Maneta cackled, in some sort of supreme nirvana. Yayorozu groaned, seriously, Midoriya, use that hand move and just blow him away. Izuku raised his hands nervously, you um, that might k kill him, Yayorozu. Yes. Blow me. Ah ha ha ha. Maybe just a little bit. After finally removing Mineta from Yayorozu's shirt, and promising her both therapy and a restraining order, the second event began. Cavalry Battle. Midnight announced from atop the stage. Forming teams of two to four, participants get into horse and rider formation and try to steal the headbands of their opponents. Based on how you did in the last event, you were all assigned points increasing in increments of 5 with last place starting with just 5 points. A devious smile overtook her features as the screen behind her showed the point chart, but first place is worth 10 million points. Eh. Izuku suddenly felt 41 hungry pairs of eyes on him. I, I've made a terrible mistake. Midnight snickered at the panic look on the frontrunner's face. This round is all about comebacks. It's anyone's game. Each team will receive a headband displaying that team's total point value. Your job is to get as many headbands as you can to stay in the lead. Even if you lose your headband or fall, you're still in the game. The only way to get disqualified is intentionally knocking the rider off of another team. Bakugu swore under his breath, fucking pussies. 
You can use your quirks for anything else though. You have 15 minutes to choose teams. Three things happened almost instantly. 1. Todoroki immediately picked out three of his classmates and pulled them aside. You three form the ideal team of horses. Together, we'd have a counter for Bakuga's explosions and Midoriya's reflexes as well as the defense needed to keep our own points. I see. So you'd use your ice and fire to keep others at bay as the rider, then? Todoroki's gaze steeled, no. I never use my left. He looked to the stands where his beloved father stood, shining brightly like a pompous asshole. 2. Bakugo got Swarmedby prospective teammates hoping to use his quirk and point value to secure their place in the next round. Bakugo, pick me. Mina jumped. Nah, you want my strength, right? Sato flexed. How about, a sparkle? Aoyama weakly grunted, his stomach still in agony from the race. Who are you? Before the other three could scream at the ignorant blonde, Karishma clapped him on the shoulder, Yo, Baku bro, let's go. Bakugu turned to him and scoffed, PSH, weird hair. My hair's not even that different than yours, pick your battles, Kirishima. Look, you wanna be the rider, right? Who else but me could be the front horse and tank your shots? Bakugu was about to turn away, his interest waning, when the redhead said, you're after the 10 million, right? The explosive teen swiveled, you have my attention. With me, it's practically guaranteed. Bakugu grinned, a surefire sign of inevitable genocide, all right, Kurishima's front horse. Now for the rest of the extras. 3. Izuku was left completely alone. Nobody wants to keep the points for the entire game. Stupid 10 million. At least for me, points don't matter, I guess I should get people I get along with. Hey, Ojiro. He meekly approached the martial artist, only for the latter to not so discreetly scoot away. Hey, Kurishima. Fuck off, DKU. I called dibs on weird hair. You just said my name right though. Kurishima groaned while Izuku tried, and failed, to recruit Ishido or Sato. Kaminari, Ida, and Yairozu are all over there. Maybe they don't have a team. Hey you guys. Do any of you want to team up? Please say yes. Please say yes. Please say yes. Yeah. Kaminari thumbs up. Yes. But Todoroki already asked. Sorry bro. Kaminari clapped the shattered Izuku's shoulder with an apologetic smile. Yairozu smiled too, sorry Midoriya. Ida rubbed his head, Midoriya, you're an exceptional friend and a great hero. But, seeing you succeed has reminded me that I need to strive for the top as well. He stared at Izuku with newfound grit, I've lost to you three times. No more. Todoroki isn't the only one who sees you as a rival. They walked off, leaving Izuku stunned silent. I mean, I'm glad he sees me as a rival, but who sees me as a friend right now? Deku. His neck creaked with panic as he turned to Uraraka. Let's team up. Uraraka. Izuku cried a literal river, are you sure? Everyone's trying to come after me and my stupid points. She smiled, that's fine. It's better to team up with people you're friends with, right? Oh no. It's coming, heart clench. Huh. Your face is all, ugly. He wiped his eyes, eh sorry. I'm just, really glad. Too bad it didn't last, person in first, team up with me. Izuku turned to the speaker, H huh. You're that girl from before. In the support course. Why does she want to team up with me? She chuckled, I'm may handsome. I don't know you, but if you're in first, then everyone's gonna be watching you, right? That means if I'm with you, I'll be in the spotlight. That means all the big shot companies will have to look at my super cute babies. Babies? Yurarika questioned while Izuku went fetal at Hatsum's close proximity. But I'm also useful to you. Hatsum pulled out a wide swath of tools from God knows where. She doesn't even notice me, huh? By the way, my quirk's called Zoom. It lets me see up to 5 kilometers away. W.O. My quirk lets me magnify things but yours is telescopic in nature. That's so cool. They're friends already. A deep yet dull voice cut through the air, yo, pink girl. May turned with her trademark mysterious grin, yes? Her smile instantly faded. Shinso smirked, team up with me. 
Without a word, Hatsum followed him to where Ojiro and one of the Class B kids were standing. What the hell? Izuku freaked, why did she just leave us like that? Yurarika shrugged, secretly glad to be rid of Hatsum, who knows. But what should we do now? Right on time, Izuku felt a tugging at his shirt, Midoriya, do you want to sparkle? Aoyama. Do you need to team up? We. Oui. The blonde seemed less than enthused about his lack of options. Well at least he and I are friends, but his quirk complicates things, but maybe we can fix that. Izuku spotted one person hanging around alone and grinned. Perfect. Hey, team up with us. Time's up. Pick up your headbands and get into formation. 15 minutes on the clock. 10,320 points between the four of us. If we play this right, if we can defend the entire game, we win. Yurarika, make us float, right? She nodded from the right, yes. Aoyama, use your naval laser to protect our front. We, oui, monsieur. Tokoyami, you and Dark Shadow cover our blind spots. The bird man and his shadowy avatar nodded, understood. Izuku tied the band around his forehead, then I'll guard the points and keep track of everyone else. It's not ideal, but this is pretty damn good. Start. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.